Howdy y'all, and welcome to the final stop on Ojas Park. So I've assembled a photo album. A lot of these photos I've published before, but some I haven't. And I'm just gonna walk, walk you through it from beginning to end. So Ojas Park was built on a board that was roughly eight foot nine inches by about 15 and a half inches. Uh, the main line was on cork. Actually, I think everything was on cork. And it did have a run around in the beginning and um, I, I got rid of it. So when I first started, I actually wired it before I assembled it, which was pretty clever because I didn't have to get under it. Started making trees pretty much from the beginning. So here you see some of uh, the grove when it was just bent wire. Painting the track. I used coarse ballast, which was a mistake, and I went back and redid it. And you'll see in the background here, I used architectural foam uh, board to uh, rough out all the buildings when I first started. Real Florida sand was used. So these were the first, first glimpses into where I, where I was going. Because this was my first attempt with, with building a layout, scenery, all that stuff. So trying to figure out my way, trying to make realistic looking grass. So you can kind of see the architectural foam board back there doubling as the building. So they, they actually came out when I, when I built them pretty much exactly as I, I had planned them, but it gave me a shape. So the first place I built was the, the, west, the west side warehouse, which you see here, and the grove. The grove was meant to be a view blocker, but I also wanted to be able to look through the trees and take pictures. So there is the loading dock when I first made it out of styrene. The dumpster was made out of styrene and that set the tone. Once I made that, then the filth was just following. Made a bunch of little pallets to throw around and you can see the garbage is finally starting to accumulate there. So the building I actually, uh, that was the first building I think I made. So it was styrene over wood and you can see the, the background also had another little um, warehouse starting. The fence was wire, copper wire or brass wire with mesh. And here comes the garbage. When I got to this point, I was probably a month or two in and this really motivated me. Once I, once I made the dumpster, all the little barrels, all the little bits of junk, and I really got it saturated and looking like just a filthy place. I was just, that was all in. I was really excited at this point. And um, that really pushed me. So it went from being just a simple project all of a sudden to becoming more of an, an art project and a, a visual uh, project as well. I really wanted to see all these things come to life. The trees were fun. So these, if you've been following along with my uh, build series on trees, those were the Melaleucas. There's the second warehouse painted pink. You don't see much of it because it was removable and it was in the foreground. Uh, it was originally designed to be like, a, as you cross down the railroad tracks and you look left or right, you see buildings on both sides, you see the alley. The Grove really came out way better than I expected. It was really beautiful. This was uh, the truck shop when I first built it. And I was trying to get a very Miami-esque uh, building. And um, it, it was a learning process for sure. Um, you can see the warehouse is starting to get assembled in the back. I just roughed it out, and that again, it, that also is styrene. So the larger ones are styrene over wood, some sort of wooden box. Starting to detail, trying to figure out um, how to make buildings more realistic. Stucco was fun, uh, trying to get that, that uh, texture of stucco. Like you see a lot of uh, stucco in Miami, the oak trees. getting the truck shop. I always had this dream. I wanted the, the fence there and, and to be able to put trains back there. I was going to bury a train in vines like it was just abandoned at the very end. Um, but I, I quickly realized I wanted to also be able to switch those out. So there it is without the warehouse behind it. And the fence, the vines, everything was, well, that was pretty much the original plan. I wanted a lot of overgrowth 
a lot of vines, a lot of bushes and, and you know, weeds, because that's what the railroads look like in, in Miami. So you can see it's finally starting to come together. I made the fence again, that's brass with a mesh. So there was the original vine that was supposed to cover the train. And you can see it was creeping up along there. But I kind of changed that plan. So you see the overgrowth is starting to come. Everything's starting to get a little bit overgrown. The wooden fence was styrene board and batten that I just uh, made a little framework on the inside. None of the fences were ever meant to be like perfect shape or perfect. It was just I wanted a crappy looking chain link fence. And I, the since the um, wooden fence was going to be pretty much obscured, uh, it just needed a little bit of look. So a couple of things I got from, from just places where I work. And so I wanted to build this cage for uh, tanks, gas tanks. So I roughed it out of styrene. And again, that's just the same material that I used for the fence. Tires were all glued together with matte medium. And then I, I airbrushed them to give them a worn out look. There's also the wheels. I bought a tire set from some, uh, it was like 20 tires and, and rims and stuff. And then all the other junk was just things that I messed up. So those were lights, light boxes that I was trying to make that I, that I messed up. Then I just painted them rust colored and threw them over there. So this scene is starting to finally build. This was really the second scene that I worked on. So the West End Warehouse and the dumpster was pretty much the first, and this is where I came in afterwards. So the warehouse was, was finished at this point. I got the light boxes done. I had to kind of guess at this third port. This, this building is actually about, man, a thousand feet long in, in real life, and there's many more bays, but this had a weird shaped bay here where the curve comes. And so I had to kind of guess at how that whole thing was and I think it came out pretty good so I struggled with uh, how I was going to do the uh, pavement because I wanted buried track but I also wanted a parking lot and there is a spot where this the road actually kind of there's a little driveway thing that kind of goes over into the back parking lot and so I didn't know what I was going to do and then styrene uh, was the way to go I think I'll always do everything out of styrene because I, I, I'm really I've been working with styrene for so long that I can control it. So uh, pavement, concrete, um, buildings, wood. I, I know what I'm going to get every time. I know what the end result. If I use odd materials that I don't know, that you know they react differently with paints and washes. I have much better control with styrene. So I, I'm just uh, relegated to making everything out of styrene. The handrails I did make out of brass or copper wire. I don't remember which one it was. Uh, was the thinnest wire I had, whatever, I, and I just soldered. So you can see, um, once you paint the styrene um, and then come back in and do some weathering and washes, it starts to look really good. So he was the first steps of, of that process. Still hadn't uh, put the bushes. I hadn't really um, figured out what I was going to do in front of the fence. I knew I wanted some overgrowth there, but I hadn't come up with a, a full path. But even cabinets awnings out of styrene, just rough them up, uh, get them, give them a little bit of texture, some flow, and um, get them painted, and they look pretty good. I mean, that's, that's pretty good for a, a fake canvas. This was a nice model. I think this was exact rail. So now you can see I've, I've got sand as the ballast in here, and then I'll come back in with static grass. So I made the tiniest tufts. I think it's two and four mil tufts that I made with a matte medium and then I applied it all with tweezers it, it took a little bit of time but I, I really liked the result it was better than I think painting it and just spreading all over um, you get a, a, a much more a random selection of uh, of grass rather than you know like a manicured lawn look so painted shadows so it looks like there's a lot of shadows there but a lot of that stuff is painted on the ground so wherever I had a vertical obstruction that would cast a shadow like a tree or a fence or a building. Um, I painted a shadow. I made the ground darker. So where I go to work, I would park in a parking lot and I had this generator right next to where I parked every day for the large office building. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to make it. So I, I, I pretty much fabbed it up out of styrene 
and I made a little uh, scene out of it. So it has its own little diorama that just kind of slips and pastes. So that was the first couple layers of paint, and then um, kind of weathered a little bit, made it a lot lighter. But uh, I really like the way it turned out. It's it's very very close. Uh, it actually is pretty pretty damn close to the prototype. It looks a lot like it. <laughs> when I showed the people at work, they were like, "Oh my god, that's pretty cool." So there you can kind of see with a little diorama, and then I made all the little uh, accoutrements that went in it, the uh, little panel and the. Uh, uh, electrical box and also put in a backflow. So this scene is really one of my favorite scenes. There's a little security camera footage from above. Make sure nothing's going on. So here are the little bits that went into the generator scene. You have a lot of backflows in almost all of the businesses. You see some kind of either for uh, red, painted red for uh, fire or blue for water, but they're everywhere. So these were just made out of styrene. See, it came out pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. It's one of those things that you, you, you if you look at the board real quick, you don't even notice it just kind of blends in. But once you kind of focus in on it, you see all the detail. Um, it, it kind of changes the dynamic of it. But it looks like it's supposed to be there. It's not there on the prototype. It's actually probably where I work. But it, it definitely has a... Uh, it definitely fits in. And I was going to put a little picnic, picnic bench there like, you know, the people could come back or employees could eat their lunch there or something like that. So you see, once I finally got everything, all the overgrowth in there, this scene actually uh, turned out really nice. I was really happy with it. Lights really make a difference. Kept moving the trees around. I, I must have put five or six trees in that spot, made made new ones, and I would just drop them in. I really didn't uh, know which way I was going to go with the trees. I made a lot of trees. Figured I'd let them all fight it out and see which ones made the board. Um, but here you can see with the warehouse painted before I painted the tanks and put the fence up around the LPG facility. The LPG facility is a lot larger and had a, more tanks and was a little bit different. But I, I, I was trying to bluff it. There was many buildings over there. So what I did was made one very Miami looking building, but I made a lot of angles because I figured um, I could create a little bit of depth because from the that front of that wall to where the back is, is only three inches deep. So I had to really sell this as, as, a, as a large unit, but I didn't have much space to work with. Back down at the truck shop. <laughs> and you can see most of it was just lit with lamps. I never did finish the top. Never did shadow box it. But again, it was it was a thing where I, I kind of stopped because it was gonna it was gonna take so much work to do that because it was sitting on pallets, so I was gonna have to recreate the whole thing and I was gonna end up with this giant looming thing. It, it this thing sits in my living room where it did before I took it down. So you can see this is finally starting to come in uh, to shape. I really like this building. I'm, I'm going to save this for some other project. So here's an actual shot of the prototype that is from uh, satellite uh, Google Maps, I guess. And then there it is overlaid over uh, what I built pretty close. And the railing on the steps was, again, brass or copper wire. I got a little bit creative because I didn't think about how I built the steps at first, so I had to kind of uh, shape the railings to give them an odd shape, and trying to um, solder that was, was pretty tricky. Obviously, if you look at this, there's there's no denying that a lot of this was uh, boomer inspired. Um, you know, when I started this project, I wanted it to look a certain way, and you know, I really wanted worn, uh, detailed uh, buildings and scenery, 
And when I found Boomer's channel, it was it was an eye opener for me. And you know, I I've been doing I've been building models and and working with art supplies that he he uses all my life. So those were all things that I was familiar with. So he basically showed me how to take skills and use the materials I I knew, and and apply them to model railroad. And you know, for that I'm I'm eternally grateful. And the man took time to answer all my questions, which I asked a lot promptly. Um, so you know, I, I hats off to him because without him, a lot of this wouldn't have happened. And I'm sure a lot of a lot of, a lot of people that, that that have a similar feeling. So this is finally starting to come together, starting to look good. I tried to buy some cars that really look like Miami in the 90s when, when I looked there. So this was a, a GP18, I believe that I was I converted to a GP9. That's uh, FEC669, if you had seen that. I had to cut it up and do a bunch of work to it. Also took two uh, FEC uh, GP40-2s that I had and tried to make them a uh, little bit older. Here is uh, 226, which is was is a nightmare. That thing still doesn't work. So I, I still got to finish all these. Uh, this is a lot of brass. The problem with this thing is just so small. And the drivetrain, I was trying to uh, change the drivetrain. It was a lifelike Proto 2000. It's a nightmare. It looks cool. Um, it's almost finished for that. But, you know, the internals are, are a nightmare. I had to walk away from it because I was so frustrated. But there was a lot of uh, photo etch stuff on here. It's a beautiful model. They did a really nice job. Um, I'm really, I really was excited to, to finish this, but I could not, could not get anything in there. It's tiny. By the time I put, uh, you know, DCC decoder, sound speakers, it, it, and tried to change the drivetrain because everybody said the drivetrain was crap in this, so I was trying to change it to, from the beginning, and it, it's it. I hate I hate this project. I I'm so excited. Like I I did six six nine, and that was such a a pleasure to do that rebuild. This was the opposite. This made me want to uh, just quit. And um, you know, it, it's frustrating. So four fifteen and four sixteen were sister uh, GP forties. I changed the lights. So I wanted to do the centrical lights in the front. And I fabbed up a little bit of uh, the little air conditioner on top, some styrene, did all the piping. And um, once they paint, well, I got this, these painted, they look pretty good. So one is about half half done. I just got to finish wiring, put all the parts back on it. It's, it they're both painted. And then, um, but 415 is actually decals. And it just needs a little bit of work. I just got sidetracked. You know, you get a sidetracked with other projects and you know, these things go by the wayside. So there's 415 in the back, 416 is in front. Uh, some of the models, I'm amazed at the detail in HO scale. And here's 669. So this was the GP18. I bought it because it had sound and DCC and it was a ridiculous, I found it for a stupid price, brand new, it was like 170 bucks. So I bought it even though it wasn't gonna work and I, and I bought a bunch of photo etch stuff and converted it, it's got the vents. Um, Again, this was uh, Boomer's painting technique with uh, isopropyl alcohol and Tamiya paints. And it, it came out really good. Back to the garbage. Painted the tanks. I'm getting ready. This is right before I put the fence in here. And I, that really, really changed the tone for because it created that separation. More garbage. The trees were so much fun. I really enjoyed making trees for this project. So I'm just going to keep making them. Tropic shop at night. Um, it's such a cool, cool scene. There it is, morning. So I had sliding glass, a sliding glass door right next to uh, the board. And so the east side of the layout would always get the morning light first and it was really cool to sit there in the morning, drink coffee. I'll miss that. There's 
and this scene just kept evolving. I just kept changing the grass and putting more stuff. This was a learning project, so a lot of the things that you see here may have not been uh, prototypical or on the prototype itself, but there were things that I wanted to learn how to do or make. So a lot of this is just me, uh, a desire to, to learn and, and push myself. What can I do? How is this done? Uh, what is possible? What's not possible? And I, I don't think I really failed at anything. Some, some things, you know, like the uh, 226 I'm still working on. But um, as far as things on the board, scenery, buildings, that type of thing, I, I managed to figure out how to do all, of, all the things that I wanted to do. And most of it turned out better than I, I could have imagined. Paint everything. So all of the ground was, was done with airbrush and washes. There's just an endless layer of detail. The, the more you zoom in, the more stuff is there. And that was just because I kept adding stuff. And I would see something in the world, just walking around, driving around, looking at things, looking at pictures, watching other uh, YouTubers post stuff online. So these, this is um, 509, which was Athrogenesis and 402 is Atlas. When you hit the brakes, the red light comes on. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Night shots on the board were always fun. Thought I would just turn off everything and just... The tank cars are my favorite. I really love watching. I think they're the nicest to watch roll for me anyway. I, I really enjoy them. Whatever I do next, tank cars will probably be a prominent... Uh, feature I got lucky I found a Miami Miami bus because <laughs> I was gonna have to make one 501 I, I don't really like this paint scheme the new paint scheme but I ended up buying that one and I was gonna paint it to 511 because that was one of the uh, locos that I fell in love with they, it just had so much character and I found some really cool pictures of it Athern Genesis makes really nice stuff. Uh, really, really, really nice stuff. You get that stuff weathered up, man, they're pretty. The uh, well car was uh, Proto 2000, and that's nice. That's the only one that I have that's metal. I had a bunch of them, but they were plastic. That one is really nice. Some night shots and a morning shot here. So in the winter time, I would get, or as it's spring into summer, uh, the sun coming through the door would actually run the length of the board. And in winter, it would cut off. I'd only get about three feet in. But some in the towards the summer, it actually the as the the sun came up at a different uh, angle, it actually uh, lit up everything. It's pretty cool. This is a uh, Rapido flat car, really cool. Wood was nice. Man, these things weather up so nice. This is a uh, Tangent, cool model. That's, that's, that, that's also metal. Again, here's this. This was this is such a well detailed model. Oak tree. Five oh nine. So this was a different era. This is more of a uh, the eighties, early nineties. I think they might have. I I oh, citrical lights into the early nineties. I can't remember, but I. I Seem to remember seeing them before they went to ditch lights. 505, I made a little bit darker. I ended up buying some SD70s because they were really good deals. I have a couple of them, then I'll, I'll work on those as I get into some new projects. But the SD70 uh, for FEC was was a was a good deal. That's why I bought it. It really was too big for my layout, but it just looks so cool and and it sounds phenomenal. This as a Soundtrack Tsunami, but all the little uh, 
acoustics in it, they really got right. It's got like this little ping and a little um, harmonic uh, overtone that like it kind of, it's really, really neat. These were Walther's, I think, uh, containers, but man, you throw some weather on them, they look fantastic. They were probably the cheapest ones I could find, but they weather up real nice and look really good. It's actually a doormat. I don't know if <laughs> you can see that. It's, I took a piece of the fence material, the wedding veil material, and just glued it to some 10,000 styrene and painted it uh, black and gray. And it actually came out to be a pretty good like rubber type doormat. This was for a project, but I, I wanted a, um, a, a 12 panel uh, a gondola and I couldn't find one. Everything's 13, 14 or 10. And I can't even figure out what has a 12. It was for a project. I found a gondola, gondola that's local that had some really cool graffiti and weathering and I wanted to replicate it. So I'm either going to have to make one from scratch or modify that one. I don't know. I, I might try to make one out of brass. That might be a fun project. Somebody I put this up there and they were like, did you put containers on top of buildings? I was like, you know what? In Miami, you actually see dumb crap like that. You see cars, you drive by like uh, uh, salvage yards and they have like containers and there'll be cars on top, like wrecked cars and stuff. Uh, this was another nice model. That This weathered up really well. I think this was another, um, uh, I don't remember who made that one. Some weather Genesis hoppers. I actually listed those on eBay. I was trying to get rid of them. I wanted to weather some more, so I figured I would swap them out. 669 is my favorite. It was my favorite to run. It, it sounds good. It, it runs really good. I love that loco. And I really need to finish it. I, I, I was like stopped halfway. I was like, yeah, whatever. But I still ran it. I loved it. So as an Atherin RTR, Inke Clay, Tankar. But again, this this weathered up really well too. I I, I bought it new, but I think it, somebody had broke, I had used it and broke parts off of it. Um, again, these these cheap little boxes actually weathered up really nice. I play around with textures and colors sometimes because if you look at old pictures, like you pull up uh, railpictures.net and you look at old FEC, they really have that look like that, that past shot there. Barrels in there. It's a fine line of, of how much you can actually add into a scene um, where it just looks cluttered and or where it looks right it's it, there's a balance there was I would remove stuff I would change stuff all the time just to just to try to create a better balance you know some things that just it, even though they have a lot in the going on it's you can kind of uh, focus in on things and then if you look around I think that's the key the couch the funky couch <laughs> There's like there's furniture all over like this in Miami. You see this stuff every mattresses and you know bags of clothes. Spent years working for Ford. I sold. I used to be a commercial account manager, sell trucks. I sold a ton of these chassis. So this was uh, fun to do. Um, telephone poles again, boomer inspired. If you do this, they look absolutely phenomenal. Once you detail them out, paint them, they're outstanding. What a, what a fun project. And they look great. I mean, they really make they really make the scene. This was a cement junction box. I see these everywhere. They're always on the side of the road. They sit there for sometimes years and months. So I made a couple of them, and then I was making the, um, the, 
uh, pipes that go in the drain pipes. But this was was a neat thing, and they they look cool. I mean, they're usually like covered in graffiti if they sit there long enough. Um, some more um, box cars. Scene's finally finally done. 505 and 509 hooked up, going to work. It's ended up to be a really nice scene too. I like using that building as a backdrop. The sun, sun hitting the warehouse in the morning. Final overlay, probably round three of uh, floral and bushes. The last shot of this was probably a couple of days before I took the board down. So the final final run here. It's a little bit of a night shot. And so, you know, this is bittersweet, but I'd like to thank everybody who followed along with the journey of Rogers Park. There were a lot of people here that were from the start. I was about a year into when I first started posting, but you know, I just want to thank everybody. Support was great. I met a lot of good friends and you know, felt good to do this. So thank you. Hopefully you guys hang around. I'll be doing other little projects here and there, still posting stuff. I still post regularly. And um, you know, I'll, I'll start working on some, some other projects and hopefully I'll build another way out. So goodbye from Ogis Park.